Hey there, in this video, I'll be going through how we scaled ad spend of a client from 5K a month to 75K a month in a five month period. So that's a 15X in ad spend in just that five month period of working together. Now, in regards to the contents of the video, we'll start off with the scaling fundamentals. We'll then go into the Google ad strategy that we applied into their accounts. We'll dive into the Facebook ad strategy. And then lastly, I've thrown a bonus section in there, which we'll dive into towards the end. Now, if I quickly minimize myself here, so you can see my full screen, and we scroll down into page one, I wanna start off with the scaling fundamentals. So pillar number one was the client and ourselves both focused on CAC with a really strong retention strategy. Now, the reason why we had a focus on CAC over Mer was because the niche is health creams. Now, there's a lot of repeat purchaseability within this particular niche, as well as within this brand as a whole. They also had a really strong retention strategy already in place, um, which works perfectly to focus on CAC. First order profitability is nice to have here, but it's not actually necessary. They have a $70 AOV, but they have a $125 LTV. So we can acquire, acquire customers on break even and actually make the profitability on that second and third purchase. Focusing on LTV to CAC ratios rather than MER or in-platform ROAS. Now, what you'll find with all of these scaling fundamentals is this is both the way that we're approaching the ad account, the way that we're approaching scaling, but also the way that the client is approaching the ad account and approaching scaling. It's very much so a communication piece where we're communicating the pillar and how and why we approach the ad account and scaling in this way, and then getting the client on board and allowing us to scale their accounts and scale their brand as a whole with this mindset shift. Now, pillar number two is a willingness to test and iterate aggressively. The client luckily was willing to double down on what was actually working, even if it was just one single product at the start. When we started working with this client, they had 10 to 15 products in their product range, but we very quickly found that just one product was performing well. Now, most clients, most business owners out there will see that and not want to completely lean into the one product that's working. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but most business owners do want to have even distribution of spend, profitability, and order and product turnover across their entire SKU range. But from an actual scaling point of view, this ends up not making sense. What makes the most sense is find what's working out of the products that you have available, scale that, and then use that additional cash flow to test and scale further products within the range, which is exactly what we did here. We scaled one product from $5,000 a month in spend all the way up to $25,000 a month in spend, which unlocked the revenue and the cash flow for us to start testing on different product ranges, which continued to allow us to unlock further degrees of scalability within the account, which has led us now to spending $75,000 per month. Pillar number three was not neglecting the post-click experience. Now we just handle the media buying and the paid ads side of things, but we also consult on the post-click experience and CRO. And the fantastic thing about working with this client is that they didn't neglect the website experience. And this goes to show in the conversion rates over time. Conversion rates on the site as of August, 2023 were 5.4%, whereas back in March, 2023, they were 3.6%, despite traffic 2Xing. So generally speaking, as you scale, as traffic increases, conversion rates should decrease. As you expand your target demographic on Facebook, as you expand into broader key terms on Google, you have worse quality traffic that's not going to convert as well. But the opposite has actually happened here. Conversion rates have increased by about 50% over the course of the last few months, just because the website and the CRO has continued to improve and iterate over time. That then moves nicely into the strategy on Google. So pillar number one of how we approached Google was consolidation. We consolidated all of the campaigns down into a single fully fledged performance max build with an accompanying brand search. Now this approach consolidated spend and also created a healthy spend to asset group ratio, which allowed the campaigns to optimize effectively. And this is something that's overlooked by quite a lot of performance max campaign builds that I see when I'm auditing accounts, which is that you really need to have 40 to $50 per day per asset group to see an increase in performance through hyper-segmenting at the asset group level. There's no point in going ahead and putting 10 asset groups in a PMAX if it only has a $10 budget. You'll never exit the learning phase. The performance max won't be able to distribute enough spend between those asset groups. And so you won't see an improvement in performance. In fact, you'll see worse performance 
than the exact same campaign with just one asset group. So if you are going to segment at the asset group level, which does make sense for continuity within the retargeting funnel and the ability to specify audience signals depending on individual collections, make sure that you're doing it with a large budget Pmax and that you're not segmenting down to the point where only 20 to $30 is able to get allocated into each of those asset groups. Now, due to their really small range of products, we were actually able to create one asset group tailored around each individual product within the Pmax. Now, a few of the low performing products we didn't even include in the Pmax at the start, but over time, as budget scaled, we started to introduce them and we started to focus on the wider range. This ensured that the most relevant retargeting channels were possible for each product. So in terms of the assets that were getting allocated to each individual product, by segmenting based on individual product, it allowed us to have continuity within that retargeting funnel. Now, based on individual product performance, we excluded a few of the products around about a month ago from the performance max just to ensure that spend was always getting distributed in the most effective manner possible so that we can continue to scale this campaign without dragging ROAS down from testing products that we just know aren't going to perform as well as our primary product A's. Those secondary products are now getting implemented in the retention strategy for cross-sells, upsells, and bundling options rather than being pushed as the primary product within the actual advertising. That then leads into pillar two, which was testing. From this approach that I've just gone through, it looks like all we're doing is launching a performance max and then scaling budgets over time with a really strong build. But that's actually not the case. We were continuing and we still continue to roll out testing on a monthly basis with a 20% allocation of spend. So we're continuing to test supplementary and adjacent shopping campaigns, search campaigns, display campaigns, discover campaigns, actually making structural changes to the Pmax, running multiple Pmaxes alongside each other, running feed only Pmaxes, running feed only asset groups. All of these tests are continuing to go on so that we can find the most optimal structure possible for this ad account. It just so happens that at the moment, out of all of the tests that we've run, which is a lot, the single performance max build is still outperforming from an MER perspective, from a blended ROAS perspective, and from an in-platform ROAS perspective. That then moves into pillar number three, which is focusing on new customer acquisition CAC and new customer acquisition MER, rather than just the in-platform uh, ROAS and metrics being attributed. It's very easily, and one of the biggest disadvantages of running a structure like this, which is just a large performance max build with an accompanying brand search, is that the performance max build is going to go and attribute any purchase that it possibly can. It's going to claim all of your Facebook purchases, it's going to claim all of the purchases driven from any platform as it will dynamically remarket those users across YouTube, Display and Discover, and count the view through conversions. It's really important to have an understanding that that's actually what's going on, that there's likely a heavy over attribution within the performance max, and that we need to take into consideration what the actual new customer acquisition is. Now, there's a few ways that we've done this. Firstly, we've done this as an intermediary strategy with third-party attribution tools. We haven't taken the leap and committed to $1,500,000 per month in a third-party attribution tool, and instead phase in and out of using them and just continue to double check our numbers. In addition to that, we use new customer CAC with just a basic calculation on the backend numbers that we have within Shopify. The nice thing about Shopify is you can do an easy segmentation of the last 30 day period, new customers that have been acquired. You can divide that by total ad spend and get an idea for what the new customer CAC actually looks like at an account level. Now with Google ads specifically, we're doing this through third party attribution tools and GA4 and UTM parameters. As mentioned here, Google has a tendency to over attribute, especially with large Pmax builds due to it capturing bottom of funnel conversions and retargeting across all of the Google placements. Um, so you just have to be really, really careful here, understand this and know that even if Pmax is reporting a very high in platform ROAS, that it's not likely not the correct decision to try to scale Pmax and instead to be scaling other channels that are generating that traffic that's getting retargeted. That then leads me into Facebook and pillar number one, which is a strong testing framework. In fact, this is actually probably worth iterating within the title. Now it's all well and good testing, but if you don't have a strong testing framework in mind where you're working towards an end goal, then you'll just end up testing forever. 
within a Facebook ad account. And you see this time and time again within ad accounts where it's tests on tests on tests, but there's no actual progression. There's no progression to that scaling campaign or increasing budgets in any capacity. Now off the mark, we put 80% of not just the meta advertising budget, but the total marketing budget for this brand into meta testing. And now this consisted of campaign structure tests, interest targeting tests, creative testing, copy testing, and the list goes on. Once we started to find tests and structures that were performing well, we started to shift our focus and advertising spend away from testing and into scaling these structures to grow overall sales volume. Currently, as we speak, around 80% of meta spend is going into these scaling structures that are performing really well at lower than our CAC goals and higher than our in-platform ROAS and MER goals. The remaining 20% is continuing to go towards testing. Now we could very much so distribute 100% of spend right now into these scaling structures and we would see a better MERM and better CAC overall. However, we're going to disadvantage ourselves in the long term if we're looking to continue to scale this account as we need to prevent audience fatigue as well as creative fatigue, as well as just being on top of the latest structures and what's working within Facebook by continuing this budget allocation towards testing. Pillar number two of the success that we've driven within Facebook has come from strategic creative reiteration. Now, strategic is really important in the title here. This isn't just creative re reiteration, but we're being very strategic with how, but we're being very strategic with how we're going about it. Our agency doesn't handle creative production, but we inform and brief on behalf of the clients. Now, we understand that creative is incredibly expensive and going and just getting 20 pieces of content for the sake of testing is a really good way to just destroy the cash flow of a D2C brand. And so instead, we like to focus on being really strategical with what pieces of creative we request, with what pieces of creative we request and then test within the account. So instead, as mentioned, we keep our creative requests short but precise. We analyze exactly what's working within the campaigns to inform the next piece of creative that we want to be testing. The result of that is that 90% of the time in this ad account, the creative that we requested and then tested outperformed the last, which meant that we were doing creative re re which means that we were doing creative reiteration the way that it should be done whereby every new creative test that we run within the account, we are actually seeing better performance, improving scalability of the account as a whole. Now, one quick note here is don't be scared to test simple, less processed creative. We're currently testing really, really raw assets within this ad account, and they're outperforming all of the higher quality image, video, and text overlay assets. So definitely don't put yourself in a box based on what you're seeing the latest trends are on LinkedIn or what that new creative agency is putting on their social media. Make sure that you're always testing everything because it's very much so the case within accounts that what everyone's saying works actually might not work in the account that you're managing or the brand that you own. That then leads me into the bonus here, which is that we started scaling into the USA. We've already begun scaling into the USA for this brand. I believe at the moment we're spending about $15,000 a month in the USA across Google and Meta. One key takeaway is that a much larger budget allocation is required to begin seeing results in the US. It's a much larger market and you need to be accumulating a lot more data before you can start to see that exponential effect take case or take precedence in the account. This client had been allocating $1,000 a month from the get-go when we started working with them in the US. They hold stock in the US, they've always wanted to launch in the US, but their budget allocation was just too small. So how we approach this is for the first three months of the partnership, we said that we really just want to focus on Australia. Australia is going to require less ad spend to get up and running and working, and then we can start to shift our efforts to the US once we're hitting our MER, CAC targets, and revenue goals. We started to hit those goals two months ago. And that's where we started to shift our focus over to those USA accounts. And what we quickly did was take the spend from $1,000 a month straight away to 10,000 because we knew that if we were testing around in that three to four level, that's just enough spend to annoy yourself. It's just enough spend to not actually see escape velocity and start begin seeing results that are profitable. And instead you end up in this limbo of just a little bit of testing, but not enough testing to get out of the cycle 
of continuing to test different variables. So moving to $10,000 a month, within a month, we were immediately profitable from a CAC perspective and from an LTV to CAC ratio. And as mentioned here, we didn't start to see profitable performance until we really ramped budgets aggressively. So that's a really important note for anyone that's deciding to scale into the US as a new expansion strategy. You really want to be allocating a minimum of $10,000 per month if you want to escape if you want to reach escape velocity. With that being said, that brings me to the end of this case study video on how we scaled ad spend from $5,000 a month to $75,000 a month in a five month period. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I'd be more than happy to open a discussion here. And I hope this was helpful.